I don't move by money. I can't be bought. Unbossed and unbought. You can't move me by money. I don't care how much you're paying. Because I don't need a whole lot to live on. I'm humble. I stay humble. I, I remember where I grew up at. I remember not having much. And if I could make it through that, yeah, I can make it through this. If I could make it through that, I could definitely do it through this. This is small. This is nothing. God wants our faith to increase. He wants you to have great faith. What is it that the centurion had that was different from the disciples? And again, I have to ask the question. These are the men that walk with Jesus? Let me tell you something. You can walk with Jesus. What do I mean by that? You can come to church and not have faith. Touch your neighbor and say, you can come to church and not have faith. You can. You can pay your tithes and not have faith. You can do it. Because it begins to, come some, to become something the way you're looking and you're doing what others are doing, but you don't have what others have on the inside of them. So you're wondering, why are they producing certain things and I'm not getting the same thing? I've got this, I'm, I'm paying my tithes, I'm doing, but you don't believe. And if you don't have that as a foundation, you can pay everything you got. And you'll just be broke. I want to help you. Because I believe Bethel has the ability, the pastor that we have, the changes that he's already made. I believe we have the ability to, to, to be, to grow this community and be the light in this community that God has given him. The vision that he has. I believe by faith we have the prayer warriors. I believe we have the resources. I believe we have everything we need already in place. Listen, the folks are coming. But there's something about it. When I invite people over to my house, if they don't bring nothing, we're going to eat anyway. And that's what I want you to get. You need to already have your stuff in place. Whether y'all show up with some or not, we still going to eat. I got resources that's already taken care of. And you got to believe that. You don't need nobody else to, 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 to come in here and make the changes. You can make the changes. Great faith. Stretch out. Listen, listen, nothing changes if nothing changes. Y'all didn't get that. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So if we keep doing the same thing, Pastor says it all the time, you'll keep getting what you got. Changes have to happen. Great faith. Stepping out. Doing more. Coming out learning more about the, uh, coming to Bible study. Learning more about the Lord so that you can walk in it. Getting your kids, growing your kids, bringing them in here, letting them be the example or letting them see you be the example that you need to be. You know why it's so hard to change over there? Because they've gone from here all the way up to here not hearing truth, not hearing righteousness, not hearing holiness. But I'm believing by faith that we still can strip it off. I'm believing by faith that whether you came in from the project, whether you was at the homeless shelter, whether you came in from another planet, we're going to convert you. We're going to change you into what God has called you to be. We believe in by faith that he is going to do great things in this place. We're going to be people of faith. And when you connect with us, you ain't got no choice but to be faithful. Change. Faith. It moves everything. It moves God. It moves God when you have faith. What, what does this, the centurion had? The centurion had, the centurion had first, one of the things I see in the scripture, he had a disposition toward God of authority. See, 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 most of the time, we, we don't think about this. You got to be, you got to be, you got to be respectful to the people who are in authority. You got to be respectful to the people in authority. He was respectful to Jesus because he understood he was under his authority. As a matter of fact, he gave him an example. He said, yeah, I'm a man under authority. So I understand authority. I'm under authority. He had a demeanor and a disposition that was under authority. And so it wasn't easy for him to follow when Jesus spoke. 
What is your disposition? What is your spirit? Do you have a spirit of honor? Do you have a spirit of love? Do you have a disposition that, 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 that wants to lift others up? Do you have a disposition that, that shows that you are an ambassador of Christ? Do you have that? Because we're under his authority. Then we're under pastor's authority. So you're always under authority. Even when you're on your own business, you're under authority, believe it or not. You got taxes you got to pay. You're always under authority. So, so get, used to be, get used to being under authority. He had a disposition that he even loved his servant. Now, now, now Centurion, as I said, had how many soldiers? 100. He had one that was sick. And he went and besought Jesus. One. What does that tell us about his disposition? The, the centurion number two had total dependence on God. I talked a little bit about that earlier. Total dependence on God. The Bible says he sought him out and he told Jesus, he said, he said, you don't even have to come under my roof. I trust you enough that if you just speak it, just speak it. And sometimes, as I heard Pastor uh, uh, First Lady Wilder in the back, sometimes you just have to decree it over your own life until it comes. Just decree it. Just say, I'm going to be this blessed person. I am going to change this. I'm going to be the best mother I need to be. I'm going to walk. I'm going to change things in my own life so that I set the tone for my family. You have to decree things in your own life. <laughs> Speak it over your life. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Jesus spoke the world into existence. Start speaking things over your life. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am happy. I do have joy. The world didn't give it to me. They can't take it from me. Wherever I go, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. My, 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 my dogs, my pets are blessed. My house is blessed. My thoughts are blessed. My sleep is blessed. I'm blessed all over. I'm blessed whether I'm eating bread. I'm blessed whether I'm eating water. But I'm blessed. You got to decree that. Speak it over your life. Total dependence. Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. He demonstrated faith. You got to demonstrate it. He, he, he was unashamed. Paul said, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Are you ashamed? How many folks at your job know you saved? How many of them come to you for prayer? You got to demonstrate it. I talked a little bit about this in Sunday school this morning. How, how many friends do you have know you go to church? You telling them you've been asleep since 1 o'clock? No, you just left church. You, told them, you, you didn't tell them you had choir rehearsal this morning. Your, your friends need to know. If you got anybody connected to you that don't know you saved, then you're not living right. And you're not demonstrating faith. You're not demonstrating that you trust God. Listen, it's great to put all the signs up in the, in the, in the cubicle. There ain't nothing wrong with that. That's great. But if you're cussing folks out on the way out, please take the signs down. Because you're making God look bad. Please. Okay? Don't tell nobody you saved or you're cussing folks out, okay? All right, you're not helping the kingdom. Okay, when you get to helping the kingdom, then you put that stuff back up. But, 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 but we have to demonstrate faith. He, he demonstrated faith when he followed God, when he sought God. He demonstrated that I believe that you can do this certain thing. Here, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. He carried out his directions. I, 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 he, a disposition, he depended, he demonstrated and he carried out his directions. What good is it if God tells you to fast for three days and you don't fast? I want to give you something. I want to, I want to deposit something in your spirit. But, but I've given you, I've told you what it is you need to do, but you, but you don't follow it. I told you that, that, that you need to go over to so, brother so-and-so. And brother so-and-so can, can share with you on some things. I told you you need to go to Pastor Water. I told you you need to do this, but you don't do it. Directions instruction what good is this if you don't follow it 
What, what did I tell you earlier? I said, you qualified to be a demon if you know it. That's it. That's what you qualify for. Because the demons don't trust or obey. You qualify to be a demon. Listen, listen. It's great faith. It's great faith that we want to get. It's great faith that we want. So, so we must follow the direction. The, the, the Bible says that he sent him back to his house. He didn't go with him. He sent him back to his house and said, your servant will be healed when you get back there. I, I, don't, don't talk to me. Don't, ain't, no, ain't no need to do anything. Ain't no need to bring in no water. Don't give me no money. Just go back to the house like I told you. And your servant will be healed. Direction. Direction. Disposition. This position, how am I going to develop great faith? This position, dependence, demonstration, following directions. That's how I'm going to develop great faith. Listen, listen here's, here's the thing. If this was hard, I can tell you right now, Reverend Davis wouldn't get it. Because I'm not very smart. My wife will tell you that. But I'm not very smart. I'm not smart enough. But, 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 but Jesus is so, so practical. This is a practical book. Yet it's spirit, it's spirit-filled. It's, 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 it's free of errancy. It doesn't have any errands in it. Yes, you, it, you can do exactly what it tells you that you can do in here. But you got to follow it. You got to read it. You got to know what's in it to claim it. You can't claim a promise that you don't know that's out there. You got to get in it. You got to follow directions. You got to do what it is God has called you to do. As I come to a close, there was something that I ran across that, that really gave me great encouragement as I was trying to, trying to fin figure out what, what God would give me. There were a number of messages that I felt like God was laying on my heart and on my spirit to share with you all today. And, uh, and, and the, the one about faith is just one that really stuck out. And so I was out on Tuesday over in Tuscaloosa. A new store had opened up and I was working with them on trying to get them set up on fire extinguishers. And I ran across something that I want to show you. It said, if... Read it with me. If God brings me to it, he'll bring me through it. Say it with me. If God brings me to it, he'll bring me through it. If God brings me to it, he'll bring me through it. If God brings me to it, he'll bring me through it. If God allowed me to grow up in the process without a father, he'll bring me through it. If God put me in, if, if I went to jail, he'll bring me through it. If I was addicted to drugs, He'll bring me through it. If I've been brave, if I've had cancer in my body, he'll bring me through it. If my kids are going through a bad situation, he'll bring me through it. If I get changed, if they move me around, if I lose my job tomorrow, he'll bring me through it. So we need to type this, text it, email it, tattoo it, but put it somewhere so that you know whatever you go through, God is going to bring you through it. It is time now that you walk in great faith. And if you can't, if you don't have it, develop it. I've given you the four keys. Develop it. Great faith. Listen, there is no reason why a Syrophoenician woman should have had more faith than the disciples. She was outside of the kingdom. Syrophoenician. Go back and look at it. She was outside of the kingdom. He was too. She was too. And the Syrophoenician woman, is, what I'm mentioning is in chapter 13, there is a one only one other occurrence where Jesus mentions great faith. And it is among a Syrophoenician woman where she goes because her daughter, I think is demon, uh, demon possessed. And he tells her, he tells her, he says, look, 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 what I have is for the chosen folks. And she said, what did she say to him? She said, even the dogs get to eat the crumbs. Huh? Even the dogs get to eat the crumbs. There is something for me. I'm believing it by faith. Again, outside of the fold. There is no reason why anybody should come in this church and have more, more faith than you. You ought to be leading them. Great faith. Great faith. If you don't have it, it's time to develop it. If you don't have it, it's time to develop it. It's time to develop it. It's time, church. It's time to walk in faith. We had, uh, and just a quick example for me, I'm closing. Ministers, y'all can come up. When we moved down here, we didn't have anybody. Didn't know anybody. We didn't. We had to walk out on faith. We had kids. We didn't know who was going to pick them up. I wish somebody had picked them up and kept them, but they, they didn't. But we, we had kids. We didn't know who was going to take care of them. We, we didn't know who we were going to be able to connect with. I, I had never managed 
people before. I came down here as a manager, so I never managed people before. And I get in a place where all of the people that I'm managing is older than me. So they don't want to hear from this, this little bitty guy who ain't been in the business long. I've been with the company long, but I haven't been in the business long. And, and, and so I had to develop a great faith. My wife and I had to develop great faith. We had to trust people we didn't even know. We ended up in this church. We never visited. My wife will tell you, we never visited another church. We never visited another church. We came to this church the first time by way of Miss Wilder, who connected, and Pastor Wilder, who my wife, uh, her aunt, went to school with. We came over here to visit. Knew when we came in, this is our place to be planted. I don't believe in all that running around, because I can't do no work running around. I need to get somewhere where God can use me. You need to get in a place, if you ain't found one, where God can use you. Stop running around. You can't develop that way. Plant your feet somewhere where God can grow you. And we've grown ever since. Nobody would ever believe a project boy from Norwood that grew up, that was in jail, and that came from a single parent home, and that was shifted from four families one to another would end up in a place like this. But I'm telling you, God can do anything. I say, but God. It wasn't me. It was but God. It was but God. He can do anything. He can do anything. He can do anything. And so I want to open up the doors of the church. Doors of the church are open. You feel God leading you in this place. You feel God. If y'all stand, if y'all stand with me. You feel God leading you in this place. He wants you to be in a home. He wants you to be somewhere where you're covered. He wants you to be somewhere where you can learn. He wants you to be somewhere where he can teach you. He wants you to be somewhere where some people can love on you. It's not a hard decision to make. It's just you making the commitment. Whether you're coming by letter or even as a, uh, a candidate for baptism. God wants you in this place. If you're here, I believe by faith you're here for a reason. I believe that by faith. I believe that by faith. I believe by faith that you're here for a reason. And, and here's the other thing, that you're in a critical season for this church. Because they're on the move to do something great. There are a number of other places out there that I could go and that you could go. But I'm believing by faith. I'm planted here. Because there's a harvest here. There's a harvest here. And if you don't have great faith, I want to I open up the altars for those who may not, may not have great faith. Maybe your faith has waned over the years. Maybe you, you, you're the person of little faith. I want you to come forward. You've been struggling with some things. Come forward, come forward. We want to pray and agree with you. We want you to not only pray and agree, but we want you to begin to put the things together that Scripture has just told us. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So the altars are open for those that are here. Listen, Nelson Mandela spent 27 and a half years in prison. Some of us wouldn't have made it 27 days. Faith. Faith.